Hi everybody, it's Christine McDonald from Rushing River Apiaries in Terrace and I am going to demo today how to install a nuke and how to set up your hive for the first time. And I'm going to do so wearing my gorgeous new veil from Bella Beak. Uh, so I have everything that I need here and it's just out of screen but I'll pull it up kind of one thing at a time as I put it together. I also have my smoker with me and it's going and a hive tool just in case. So to set up your hive for the very first time, you're going to start with your bottom board on the bottom. And there's different styles of these, so don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like this one. Um, this one is a screened bottom board and it has a little pull-out tray on the bottom and that's our preferred type, but there are different varieties. On top of the bottom board, you're going to put your one hive body box. And you're going to make sure that it's nice and flush at the sides and the back. And then you should be able to see the access, the front opening that the bees have to come and go from at the front. And you're going to want to orient your front, if possible, um, towards the sun. So that's typically kind of to the south. Um, a little bit southeast is great to let them catch the morning sun, if that's possible. Then inside, this is where my nuke is going to go, but your nuke is not going to have all 10 frames, which is what it takes to fill up this box. So I also have some frames with me to bring the box up to 10. So if you're getting a four frame nuke, you're going to want six extra frames. If you're getting a five frame nuke, you're going to want five extra frames. The exception to that is if you're going to use a hive feeder, that sits inside that takes up the space of one or two frames they say it takes up one um, but we have a heck of a time trying to jam it in there and we usually end up removing two so if you're using that sleeve feeder or the inside hive feeder that's going to replace one or two frames on the very side the very edge of your box so i have five frames to put in here today i'm not using the sleeve feeder so i also have five new blank empty frames that are going to go in around it and your nuke is going to go right in the middle so i'm going to take three of these frames and i'm going to put them in and i'm going to slide them right over to one side one two three pushed right up against the side wall i'm not going to put those other two in yet because i don't want to be rubbing the bees on each other when i put the frames in so i'm going to leave them out to the side and once I have all the bees in here, then I'm going to slide those last two frames in. So I like to have a little bit of room to work with um, when I'm inside the hive. I also have my inner cover. I have my feeding system. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate because this is what our um, cohort of new beekeepers got this year. Um, I'm going to show you how we use these Saracel top feeders. There's also different brands and styles of top feeders. Um, and then I can also kind of show and explain the difference if you're using a pail system on top. And then I have an outer cover or a lid that goes on the very top at the end. So, to install my nuke, and ours comes in a little plastic box that looks like this. It has five frames in there. Um, you can also get boxes that are cardboard or are kind of that corrugated plastic stuff. There's different ways that your bees might travel to you. Um, but regardless, it'll be a small portable box with room to, for four to five frames in there. And I'm just going to set this up right beside my hive. Okay, so that it's a pretty quick, easy transfer from one box into the other. Now, ideally at this point, I would sit them here and I would kind of disappear for half an hour and I would let the bees settle after a movement, especially if I've just driven them in. Um, you wanna give them a little bit of time to settle down so that they're not agitated when you open them up and start to move them. These guys haven't moved very far, just across the yard. Um, so I'm just gonna go for it. Now, somewhere on your box, there will be um, ventilation holes. Uh, on these ones, it's at both ends. They're little pieces of yellow plastic. Sometimes it's just window screen or kind of wire mesh. I'm going to puff a little bit of smoke into each of those openings. 
And we do that because the bees communicate using pheromones or scents that they share. Um, and one of those, when they are alarmed, as might happen when we're moving them and disturbing them quite a bit, um, is the alarm pheromone. And by masking that with a bit of smoke, hopefully I am going to avoid the entire box full of bees getting worked up. So I've given them a little bit of smoke and now I'm going to open them up. Now, you will probably get some bees flying around at this point and that's okay. They may have been trapped in this box for eight hours, maybe even overnight. Um, if you've traveled with them, it could be even longer than that. And that's okay for the bees. Um, you just need to understand that some of them are used to flying. There are some foragers in there that are going to be very relieved to finally uh, be able to get out. So you might see a little bit of a, um, yeah, a little bit of activity coming up out of the box. These ones, they're not moving around too much, um, but it would be normal if they were. And at this point, if you need to step away for a minute and regather yourself, um, it's fine. Uh, these can sit here as long as it's nice and warm and sunny out. They can sit there for 10 minutes um, if they need to, and it won't be a problem. So again, you can use a little bit of smoke. Um, there's a lot of bees on the top bars right now, and so it's hard to get my hands in there to get a hold of the frames. So I can give them a little more smoke just to push them down into the frames so they're not all hanging out on the top bars. And now I have a lot more room to get down in there and get a hold of those frames. Now when I move them, I am going to move them one frame at a time and I'm going to keep them in the same order. Now, I'm also going to talk about as I move these in kind of what's on each frame so that you know what to expect and what to look for in your nuke as you're moving it over. Um, but if you're working from the opposite side, you might not have things in the exact same order in me, as me, and that's okay. The beekeeper put these in here in an intentional order, and you should keep them in that order, putting them in your nuke box, and then just make sure that you've got all of the elements that I talk about. So as I pull out the edge frame, you can have a quick look. We don't want to disturb the bees too much at this point. Um, but you can have a quick look to see what's on each frame. So I can see that this outer frame is a nice food frame. There's some open honey and some pollen. And that's great. It's got nice weight to it. So I know that my bees have food in their hive in case they're rained in for a day or two um, once they first arrive and they've got some nice accessible food to keep feeding brood. So one food frame. My next frame and it's coming straight up and out and then straight down and in uh, is a brood frame. So there's some young brood on this one, some eggs and larvae. You can have a quick look for your queen. I wouldn't stress out too much at this point if you don't see a queen. Um, since your beekeeper would have been looking for that when they put it in the box. So the idea here is to be to be pretty quick because the bees are unsettled from moving. Pretty quick, get them in there, leave them alone for five to seven days, and then go in and have your first really good inspection. Okay. Another frame. So this is another good brood frame. Again, young brood. You should be seeing in your nuke um, some capped brood. This one, I'll be honest, I just pulled these out of a hive to do a demo because I don't actually have a nuke that needs moving right now. Um, so you want to see two good brood frames of different ages. So some eggs, some larvae, some capped brood, and that's going to go in there. So we've got food frame, two brood frames. This last frame is what we call, the, call a mixed framed or a choice frame. And there might be a little bit of anything on here. Um, you do want there to be something on it, not blank. Um, but it might be kind of mixed ages of brood. It might be half food, half bees, um, or half brood. And that's okay. So it's just another frame of bees for your nuke, but it might look different in different nukes. And then your last frame is going to be fairly empty. And there's a reason for that, and that is to give the queen lots of room to lay eggs. So 
especially if you're starting out with a brand new hive with all blank foundation, it's going to take your bees a few days to build up wax on that. So your nuke will come with some extra space for her to start laying eggs in the form of a mostly blank frame like this. So there's comb built over most of it. There's some bees crawling on it, but it's, it's nice and light. There's not much happening in these cells yet. And that is my fifth frame. So I've put them in, in order, food, brood, brood, mixed, and then empty space for the queen to lay. Now I'm going to put in my last two frames to finish filling up this space. And you will also notice that because you've got some blank frames in here, that the bees haven't had a chance to propolize and gum up with wax and propolis, um, that your frames are going to fit quite loosely in the hive. This won't always be the case. By next spring, you're going to have a heck of a time cramming them in there. But for now, they almost rattle around in there. What you really don't want to do, especially um, with blank frames when the bees are going to be building wax, is to leave any space in between frames. So these little nubs on the end of your frame, right here where it kind of sticks out, and here where it sticks out, those measure what they do because it's a perfect amount of bee space. So you want those pressed right up together in your nuke. You don't want to leave space in between. So from both sides, you're just going to gently kind of press things into the middle so that you don't have any space between those frames. I use my hive tool to do it. I just stick it down in between the last frame and the edge and gently push over and then gently push over from the other side. So I have a little gap on both outer edges, but that's okay because that's the last place the bees are going to make it to. If you leave too much space in between frames, um, if you try and like evenly space them in your box by leaving little gaps in there, what you will notice is that instead of your bees building nice flat uh, comb on the foundation, they often build what we call cross comb and actually join um, one frame to the next with their wax. That makes it very hard for you to move things around as a beekeeper and we usually end up scraping it off and making them start over. So I now have 10 frames in my box. If you are using a sleeve feeder, then one or two of those would come out and you would have your feeder in there. If you're using a top feeder, this is where you put it on. It's going to go right over top of the bees in your nuke. So it's open on the bottom but the bees can actually only access from the four corners and from the center of this one. Some other styles have a long kind of trough in the center where they can crawl up and access, um, but the bees never actually make it into the pool, okay? Bees can't swim. That would just mean a lot of dead bees. Um, so we want to put this right on top of them and then fill it up. You're going to fill it with one-to-one -one syrup. So one part white sugar from the grocery store, one part water. Uh, we just use hot tap water, so you don't need to boil it. Any kind of um, caramelization is actually really bad for the bees. So you really want to avoid cooking the sugar. So we just use hot tap water, just enough to dissolve um, that amount of sugar. You can do it by weight or by volume. With sugar and water, it works out to more or less the same thing. So a one-to-one -one syrup in here. And you want to do that even if you see lots of flowers around and even if beekeepers are talking about a good honey flow um, because this isn't honey yet that your bees are making. Right now all they're doing is building up that wax comb on these new plastic sheets of foundation and having a really quickly accessible sugar source is going to speed that up hugely for you. So for as long as your bees are building comb you want to keep that feeder on. On top of the feeder is where you're going to put your inner cover. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of playing. Um, sometimes it will very conveniently fit upside down and it'll sit nice and flush. And actually it looks like this one does that. So, and then I just put the plug in. Other times it won't sit flush. 
And it's okay to put it right way up where you will get a better fit, but the principle that you want to stick to no matter how you set this thing up is you don't want bees to have access to the pool. They will go in this opening and they will drown. So you can plug this with paper towel. You can put a big piece of tape across the front of it. You can, when you put your lid on, and I'll just go grab my lid. When you put your lid on, you can actually kind of scooch it backwards. So there's a little bit of playroom in lids. And if I push it all the way forward, I can feel with my fingers that there would be enough space for a bee to get in there. But if I just push it all the way back against that opening, then I know that no bee is gonna get in there, okay? So no matter how you end up putting yours on, just stick to the idea that you don't want bees getting in to the main part of that uh, top feeder. Your other option, and I know that this is a popular one because it's really easy to um, find kind of a do-it-yourself version, make it at home version, is to use a bucket feeder. So if you're using a bucket feeder, then your inner cover is gonna go right on top of the bees. And you're gonna leave the hole open. So I've pulled the plug because on that hole is where your bucket is gonna go. Oh, there's nothing in there, perfect. Okay, so your feeder is gonna go right over that hole. You can see that the bucket meets the wood all the way around. So the bees have access to the feeder, but they can't actually exit the hive from there. Um, and then typically you'll use a second box just to hide this feeder. The bees can't get into it, okay, because the hole is covered, there's no other entrance, but just something to hide the feeder and then the lid will go on top of that. So once your bees are happily moved into their new home, uh, perhaps the hardest part is you're going to want to leave them alone for about a week. Uh, you can come out and sit beside the entrance and watch them come and go and hopefully you will start to see some really good activity in front of your hive. Um, but this has been quite a disturbing process for them to be split, requeened, um, boxed up, maybe transported for a distance. And they need to just regroup. Um, it's also quite common for the queen to take a little break in laying eggs when there's been a big disturbance like that. So if you go in the next day expecting to see eggs, you may not find any. So give them a whole week, at least five days, if not a whole week, and then get in there and see how they're doing. Then have a look, do your first inspection, have a look for the queen, make sure you're still seeing all ages and stages of brood. You should by then see some new foundation drawn out. Um, and I will do another video on that first inspection after installing a nuke um, sometime in the next week or so, so that it's up there in time for your first inspections. Okay, thank you for watching.